My name is Paul Luna, and you're tuned in to FMB Lunacy. I am here today with Stacy Eames, owner of Highland Bakery. Hello. Hello. Tell us about yourself and Highland Bakery. Highland Bakery um, kind of uh, was a spinoff from my coffee company. So I had the original espresso cart company in Atlanta. So I kind of brought espresso carts to Atlanta. And through that, I was making, you know, my scones and my muffins myself and bars and, and, and whatnot. So um, I kind of stumbled into uh, founding the Highland Bakery. From my coffee cart business, I stumbled into the Highland Bakery and um, there was a father and son team that had started baking bread out of the historic old Highland Bakery building. And so I was doing a cafe concept downtown and I became friends with, with the um, owner and he was doing um, bread by milling his own grains, which I loved. Um, and so it was about eight months into his business and all he was doing was baking bread and he was ready to close his doors. And I said, hold up. I said, I'm going to Italy for 10 days. I'm going to take it off your hands. <laughs> so I just envisioned it being like full of pastries. It's a beautiful location with exposed brick and there's so much significance in the building and to the neighborhood. It's in the old fourth ward in Atlanta, which is uh, where Martin Luther King was uh, born and raised. And so, uh, you know, it just, it was screaming to be more vibrant. And from a culinary perspective, there was so much rich history in what had been before. Um, you know, I think that it, uh, the original Highland Bakery went out of um, business around the 1960s. And so there was uh, cinnamon rolls coming through its pores of the building, just wanting to have a new, a new way out. <laughs> so anyway, I got to work when I came in and started to expand this business within the four walls and created a menu, a breakfast, lunch, and brunch menu. And then, you know, along came the pastries. And, and then we even got um, uh, what is now one of the world's best cake designers, Karen Portaleo. She came in and established our, our um, cake program. And so um, and then uh, a few years back in 2015, we, we had expanded to, to nine other cor uh, corporate owned locations throughout uh, from 2004 to 2015. And then other people started calling and wanting their own Highland Bakery. So um, that's when I decided I would franchise. And so now we've expanded even more into 14 locations. And uh, so, it's been a really, really challenging and really fun-filled business. <laughs> what, what drives you to get up every day and meet the work? It's just a passion for, for doing it right, a passion for making people happy. Um, there's nothing better than to have a guest pull you over to the side and tell you, oh my gosh, is, is this your dish? And, or, you know, let me tell you about this employee of yours and, 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 and say how, how great they did their job or have an employee come to me in need of a dire need of something for their family or in a situation and needing counseling. You know, it's, uh, it's all the, when you break it down, it's about making people happy. It's about, it's about people at the end of the day. And that's what drives me. Is there a dish that's, that nobody knows about that you uh, will keep a secret that you eat at home that you would like to share with us? 
<laughs> well, I will tell you, I will tell you what um, I love is to create smoothies, really healthy smoothies. And so that's, that's kind of where I put that part of my passion into. Where, where can we find Stacy when she's not at work? Uh, probably on my bike or uh, out for a run, minus the uh, uh, air cast I'm in right now, the boot. <laughs> but, um, you know, I love climbing uh, up Stone Mountain uh, and uh, maybe taking my bike and ride around the mountain, um, hanging out with friends and uh, spending time with my, my mother, who's uh, three hours away. But, you know, if there's a day that I can take off, then I usually go to see her. What's important in your life? I've been clean and sober um, for a long time, and, and that's really important to me. Certainly, my, my business is important. Uh, my, my business is you know, for a long time, my business was almost everything. And um, I've had relationships that, you know, unfortunately had suffered because, I, you know, seven days a week, 363 days a year, it doesn't leave a lot. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I see you laughing. Uh, you know, the, the 12 to 14 hours a day, day in and day out, um, certainly you, I mean, I had for a long time, my identity was so Highland Bakery. My family, my, mo my mother um, was a professional cook. My family owned a restaurant um, from the time I was born. It was a meet and three down in Albany, Georgia, and... It was a small dining room, but there would be lines wrapped around the building. And then you'd see the mayor sitting next to a sanitation worker and them figuring out all the city's problems. But boy, did we have the best Southern cooking. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was my mom and my grandmother and my father. My father, he was... He, he was a professional baseball player because it was called hit and run and the restaurant was, but it was really my grandmother and my mother. So my mother was a professional cook for 40, uh, probably 50 years. And so that's where I kind of get my crazy zany idea that I wanted to own a restaurant. Talk to us about the impact of coronavirus before and after? Ours is a really busy operation. So um, we have in the main location, we had the commissary going on where we bake, um, you know, pastries for a lot of the other locations. We have um, catering, corporate catering. So, you know, we could have thousands of dollars worth of food going out before we even open for the day in the restaurant. And then you have a busy restaurant operation. So all these things are swirling around and, you know, we uh, dealing with, uh, um, at one point I had probably 250 employees. And so there was a lot, a lot to handle and a lot of moving parts. And then all of a sudden coronavirus happened and we, tried takeout for the first week and it just it just wasn't it wasn't there at that time um the business and having so much unknown we decided to to shut down for I guess it was probably about a month maybe a month and a week and uh the impact has had is every week is something different Every week is a new learning curve. It's um, your business has to be flexible and adapt. And just, you know, really thinking about best practices uh, for safety, sanitation, um, how to make sure that our employees are taken care of. You know, our, the unemployment system in, in Georgia has been 
a really big thing and has left some people without. So, you know, we've had to really um, be staunch advocates for our employees. Fill in the blank. Baking is? Love. <laughs> <laughs> That's our slogan. We bake love. I can tell just by walking through and seeing speed rack of, of product, if an employee is having a good day or not, if they're going through a hard time. And I know that you know this. You can look at sometimes at someone's dish and tell. Um, and so I, you know, how do you, how do you circumvent that? How do you make sure that love and that attention to detail really comes through and gives the guests the best experience. We had a pastry chef and you may know her, Taria Camarino. Yes. Yes, Taria, she is one of those and she teaches you know, people when, when, when she's trying to teach them how to tell if something's done. And you know, she said, you can hear it. You can hear this talking to you through the oven. <laughs> And, and, you know, I, I, I understand that, you know, she doesn't use a timer and I don't encourage that with most people, but, you know, there's a sensibility at one with the product, at one with whatever you are creating. We have one dish, ricotta pancakes, and they are so delightful. And I, people say, oh, I love those ricotta pancakes. I said, you know, when we're making this batter, you just want to take a bath in it. What is the meaning of playing with oneself? Uh, well, I think there can be a lot of connotations for that, right? That's correct. Um, I think of it as being playful you know, and for, you know, and I can, I can play with myself by going on a bike ride. You know, there was a time when, when that hour that I was able to go for a run was like being on vacation because it was just me, my sneakers and the pavement, the trail, whatever. And I got to totally escape from everyone and, you know, and also those were the times where my, it was my therapy session because those were the times I could decompress or, you know, problem solve or be creative. And I think it's important to have those playful times, whatever they are, because I think that's when the creativity happens. <laughs> <laughs> I was going along those notes too. I wasn't talking about the other, <laughs> but I enjoy asking those questions. <laughs> you just like the shot factor, don't you? Pretty much. <laughs> Is there anything you would like to share with us that's important to you that we have not discussed? So I saw, I had examples of two parents that had a passion for their jobs and that's why I think that I have such a passion for what I'm, I'm doing and that why I've stuck in here this long is because I really love it. You know, it's just interesting being on the path of recovery for so many years without having found that in my early life, nothing else would be possible. Do you consider yourself a lunatic? You know, if, if that gets associated with someone like you, then I would love to be a lunatic. Yes, yes, sign me up for that. <laughs> uh, you know, I think anyone in the restaurant business, it's sheer lunacy. It absolutely is. For anyone to stick in it for... I've been, you know, in this business since 1993, and that's a long time to be doing this. <laughs>